Hey folks, this is Mr. Cross, and we're going to talk about quadratic functions. And this is just a brief refresher, and it kind of covers a wide range of information about quadratic functions. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, a quadratic function is a, qua is a function that's got a square term, and it can be written in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. And the only requirement is that a can't be zero. Because if a is a zero, well then there's nothing going to be squared. And part of what makes a quadratic, well actually what makes a quadratic a quadratic, is that it's got a squared variable. So that's very important. Now, the b term can be missing and the c term can be missing, but the a is always going to be there. It's always going to be something squared in order to be a quadratic. And I'm sure that you know that when you graph a quadratic, it's going to make a parabola. It's either going to be open upward or open downward. And these are some examples of what are quadratics, and then these are not quadratics, right? So let's talk about factoring. If I'm going to factor a binomial, well, the first thing is, is that I'm going to factor, look for the, G, the greatest common factor, and then check to see if it's a difference of two squares. Because if it's factorable, it's probably going to fall into one of these two categories. Okay, so here's the first one. We've got 4x squared plus 10x, and why don't you go ahead and push pause and see if you can factor that on your own. Okay, hopefully you did that, and if you did, hopefully you found the greatest common factor was 2x, and then you divided 4x squared by 2x, and you got another 2x, and then you took 10x and divided by 2x, and you got 5. And then you double checked it by multiplying it quickly in your head to find out that you got the original. All right, let's try this one. What would you get when you do this one? Push pause and jot it down. All right, this is the difference two squares. And this is a perfect square, and this is a perfect square, and they're being subtracted. And so the way we're going to do this is we're going to make two sets of parentheses and then put one plus and one minus, and then we're going to take the square root of both terms and set them both inside there. And we get x plus 6 and x minus 6. And again, quickly double checking it, you can see when you multiply this that you get the original. Try this one. Go ahead and pause it. All right, great. So hopefully you found out that this is going to be 2x squared, and it's a difference of two squares. Once again, this is a perfect square. This is a perfect square. The, it's being subtracted. So I start off by taking the square root I'm putting that in the front. I'm going to make 1 plus and 1 minus, and then it's going to be the square root of 25 plus 5 and minus 5. All right, last one. All right, we'll do this one right now. We can look for the greatest common factor, and I can see that this is going to divide by 2x, and when I take 18x squared and divide by 2x, I'm going to get 9x squared, and then 32x divided by 2. It's going to be negative 16. And hopefully you didn't stop there. Now, when you look at these two, you can see, well, hopefully you can see that they're still perfect squares and they're being subtracted. So I could go ahead and factor this again. So pause it and take a look and see what that looks like. All right, so hopefully you did that and you found out that if I take this square, square root and then this square root, and then need one plus and one minus, I would end up with this. All right, let's take a look at the next thing. Quadratic functions factoring. If I'm going to do a trinomial, so that means it's got two, three terms, and typically we're going to write them in descending order, x squared, then the number x, and then the constant. And if a is equal to one, this is generally what I'm going to do. And if I give these to you, Why don't you go ahead and pause it and then see if you can factor those for me real quick. Okay, so if you did that, hopefully you found that this is going to factor to plus 9 and minus 6. Because once again, if I multiply x times x, I'm going to get x squared. And then negative 6x plus 9x is going to be 3x. And 9 times 6 is going to be negative 54. And then when you do this one, hopefully you got this, because negative uh, 36x minus 2x is going to be negative 38x. 
And the last one is going to be a negative 8 and a plus 5. So hopefully this wasn't a big deal for you. Uh, when there's a number in front of the x squared, then I use what's called the AC method, or some call it the x factor. So uh, let's go ahead and just try one. It'll make more sense. If I've got this one here, 3x squared plus 7x minus 6, I'm going to go ahead and try to factor this. So a times c, that's 3 times negative 6, that's negative 18. That goes on top. And then the 7, that goes down below. Now it's important to write the signs, but I don't write the signs if it's net positive. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and take the a and then put that below the dividing lines. The next thing I'm going to do now is I look for the numbers. And again, this is kind of like what we just did a minute ago. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to get to negative 18, but they also have to add to get to 7. So think about that for a second. Pause it and see what the numbers are. All right, so hopefully what you got was 9 and 2, negative 2. 9 times negative 2 is equal to negative 18, and 9 minus 2 is equal to 7. And then the next step is, is that if either one of these is not reduced, or this, if it's a fraction, meaning that you could reduce it, then go ahead and do that. So this could be reduced to 3 over 1. This is fine the way it is. And see, now if I'm factoring, all I do is slap an x on the bottom end, and then I write them up, going up. So this one, first factor, would be x plus 3, and then the other factor would be 3x minus 2. Let's try another one. I got 4x squared plus 8x plus 3. Pause it and try to do it on your own. Okay, so when I do this, I got 4 times 3, that's a 12, and then I put an 8 at the bottom, and then I put 4s below here. Next thing I'm doing is looking for two numbers that multiply to get to 12, but then they have to add to get to 8. The two numbers I come up with are 6 and 2. 6 times 2 equals 12. 6 plus 2 equals 8. So now pause it and finish it. Go ahead and, you know, write the factors. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reduce both of these fractions. This becomes 3 over 2x, and this becomes 1 over 2x. And then all I'm going to do is write them going up. So this is going to be 2x plus 3, and the other factor is going to be 2x plus 1. And no, it doesn't matter with the order. You can put either one of the factors first or second. That part doesn't make any difference. All right, so now, four terms. What have we got four terms? This is called factoring by grouping. And when you use this is when you've got four terms, and there isn't a greatest common factor between all of them. And so what we're going to do is going to group the first two terms together, and the last two terms together, and then try to factor out a greatest common factor out of the two. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. Here I've got x to the third plus 7x squared plus 2x plus 14, and then I pull them apart in the two groups. And again, if you look at the original, you can see that I can't get the greatest common factor. There is no greatest common factor for all four terms. So again, if I can't, the next thing is to try to take a greatest common factor out of two of the terms at a time. And so let's go ahead and do this together. In this case, what's the greatest common factor between these two numbers? Yeah, it's going to be x squared. And then if when I divide this out, x to the third divided by x squared is going to be x. And 7x squared divided by x squared is going to be 7. And that gives me this. Now, I'm going to do it again here. What's the greatest common factor between these two terms? Yeah, it's going to be 2. And then when I divide 2x by 2, I get x plus 7. And you'll notice how these two are the same. So the very last step is I'm going to factor out the greatest common factor of these two. And this is kind of weird for people to kind of wrap their head around. But you'll notice how this is a factor of both of the terms. x plus 7 is a factor of both terms. So if I write that first, x plus 7, what's this divided by x plus 7? Well, it's x squared. And what's this divided by x plus 7? Well, it's going to be 2. And that gives us this. Okay, let's take a look at this one. We've got 3x squared plus uh, xy minus 12x minus 4y. And again, there's four terms. There's no greatest common factor for all four terms. So the thing I try to do is I try to group them. And I'm going to try trying the first two together and the second two together. Now, I will mention this. It doesn't always work that the first two 
and the second two go together. Sometimes you do the middle two and the outside two, but I always tried the first two and the second two first. Um, and the other thing is, I guess it's like any other factoring, it's not always going to work. This is something you try when you get four terms. Anyway, when I go ahead and do this, I'm going to put the uh, first group together and the second group together. And now I'm going to look for greatest common factors for each one of these. Pause this and see if you can come up with the greatest common factor for both of those two groups. Okay, great. I hope you did that. And when you did that, hopefully you, what you found was is that the greatest common factor of the first group was x. And when I did that, divided it out, I got x times 3x plus y. If not, take a look at that and see where it came from. And then in the second group, what I did was I divided out negative 4. Now, some of you are wondering, well, why did you do that? Why don't you just divide by 4? Well, I want you to think about it. If I would have divided by 4, it would have been negative 12x divided by 4, and that would have given me a negative 3x, which is really close to what I want this to be. I want this to be a positive 3x like the other one. When I'm, when I'm factoring by grouping, I like this guy to be the same. That's how this is going to work. So when I do that by 4, that doesn't give me what I want. And then I say to myself, well, what if it had been a negative 4? Well, negative 12 divided by negative 4 is positive 3. And negative 4y divided by negative 4 is positive y. And now this matches exactly the other grouping. And now, again, I got two terms. They both are multiplied by 3x plus y. That means the 3x plus y is the greatest common factor. And so if I factor that out and divide both terms by 3x plus y, I'm going to get x minus 4. And this would be how those how these four terms factor. All right, so let's take a look at the vertex and find the y-intercept. So if I've got a, a function, a quadratic, and it's written in standard or general form, ax squared plus bx plus c, and I want to find the vertex, well, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take negative b over 2a, and that's going to give me the x part of my vertex. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that x, and I'm going to substitute it back into my equation, and when I do that, it's going to equal the y part of my vertex. So let's try that. I've got this right here, and what I want to do is I want to find the vertex. So this is a, 1, and b is 6, and c is 5. So if I do negative 6 divided by 2, which is 2 times a, I'm going to find out that the x part of my vertex is negative 3. Once I've got that, well, then I'm going to take my... And I know the first part of my vertex is negative 3. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and substitute it back in. Negative 3 squared plus 6 times negative 3 plus 5. And I'm going to get y part of my vertex is negative 4. And see, that's my vertex. And so what you got to remember is it's negative b over 2a. Now, once I've got that, finding the y-intercept is pretty easy. Because all I want to always remember that the y-intercept is the value of y when x equals 0. So all I've got to do is replace these two x's with zeros. Sorry, I've got to replace these two x's with zeros. So if I make that 0 squared plus 6 times 0, y is going to equal 5. So the y-intercept is 0, 5. All right, let's try this one. If I'm going to factor, if I'm going to try to find the vertex for this, I'm going to do the same exact thing. Now, the only thing that makes this a little more difficult is the b term. Well, let's try and you'll see what I'm talking about. What's negative of negative 9? Well, it's positive 9. What's 9 divided by 4? Well, it's 2.25. Well, don't be afraid of that. That's what it is. So now that's the x part of my, my vertex. Now, I'm going to take the 2.25 and substitute it back in the function. And when I substitute it back in, I'm always going to take the thing I substitute back in and put it in parentheses. And I suggest you try doing that in your calculator right now and see that you come up with the same number that I did, which was negative 5.125. That's the y part of my vertex. So now I've got both x and y for my vertex. And all i got to do is find the y-intercept. And all i got to do to find the y-intercept is make these x's equal to 0. So it's going to be 2 times 0 minus 9 times 0. Again, my y-intercept is going to be 0, 5. Okay, I'm going to hold up here and end the video now. 
and then uh, look for part two for the rest of the information about the quadratics. All right, thanks for watching.